Hi everyone, uh, I'm Uli and I'm here to present to you the new uh, WhatsApp clone tutorial. Uh, I tweeted about it a couple of weeks ago where we built the full app. Now we have a full step-by-step -step tutorial and I'm going to talk a bit about what did we actually do here and why it's different from other tutorials um, and how to get started. So first of all, if you want to just check out the application and the step-by-step -step tutorial, it's here on uh, Urigo WhatsApp clone tutorial. Um, and you have here links to the tutorial itself and the, basically a website of the framework we used to build the tutorial, which I'll talk a bit about that as well. Um, also, this app is basically built out of two repositories. One is the client repository and the server repository. Uh, the client repository is here using React um, and the server repository is here using Node, TypeScript, Postgres. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the reason I created this tutorial is because all the time there's tutorials that are um, they're really cool, they're building something really nice, uh, you build it really fast, and then two months later, it doesn't work. Uh, you get to step three, and there's a new version, like it's the new React, or it's a new version of style components, or whatever, and even though everyone is amazing from trying not to introduce breaking changes, there's so many libraries, and always you start a tutorial, and it breaks. And the reason is, it's very hard and time-consuming um, to update the tutorial. Uh, as being someone who's writing a tutorial, it takes a lot of time and you have other stuff to do. Um, and so what I thought was, after doing a lot of those tutorials in the past, like how can I make it easier um, to, to build tutorials? Uh, and that's why uh, we created the Tortilla, which is just a free um, CLI that helps you create tutorials from Git. So. All the tutorials are basically um, based out of Git commits, um, and that gives you a lot of interesting opportunities. Um, first of all, let's look at the tutorial itself. I'll talk later about the tutorial itself, but you can use the framework for any tutorial. Um, so you can see here, there's step-by-step -step guides and what to do. Now let's just take a random step. Uh, and scroll, and you'll see that each commit is actually referenced um, to an actual git uh, commit. And what we can do is we can actually go um, and open that commit on GitHub, the exact specific commit, um, when my computer won't die from recording the screencast. So yeah, you can see here the full commit and it's all, you can actually go on GitHub and everything is on GitHub and open source. So more than that, you can download the tutorial at the exact same step or open an issue on GitHub with the exact um, step that you were in. Um, but that's just the start, right? That's, that means that it's very, it's easier to maintain and you know this is like a real app that actually works uh, and this is really nice. But what it gives you actually, which is the really interesting part, is that if this is a real uh, real commit, then let's go, for example, to the client uh, repositories. Uh, then we see that we can actually create, uh, we, we actually introduced Renovate to the repo. So every time Apollo releases a new version, it PRs our, uh, automatically PRs our tutorial. Now, not only that, each step of the tutorial has uh, tests. So I know now that on each step uh, of the, if I'll update uh, Apollo to the latest version, all the tests across all the tutorial will work. So I can easily merge and I can be safe with it. Uh, if it breaks, I know that I need to update my tutorial in a specific step. I know where is the step that actually fails. Um, but let's take it a step further. Let's say I'm keeping updating the tutorial, but all of you guys already um, are in step five or in the middle or maybe finished the tutorial already. So the fact that I'm updating it now, um, you don't know. You, you have no idea that what changed and how to update it. But then again, it's based on git commit. So now what we can do is that not only that we have versions of the tutorial, so we have the version here from 
especially 1st of May, and I can just jump to it uh, and get back to the tutorial back in time. And also, now that I have a new version, I can just click here and I'll get the full diff of what changed. For example, if I introduced a new Apollo version, I can go through the whole stack and see what changed. I can use this view or that view, whatever I want. And I have the full tree of what actually changed in the tutorial. For example, in the server, I can go to the package JSON and I can see exactly what changed. So that's a powerful thing because now as a learner, you don't need to waste your time. Every time there's a new hot new thing or new hot technology, you can now just go and see what the update is. You don't need to do over tutorials over and over again of things you already knew. But we can take it a step further. We can even say, what if uh, I have a version of React and I have a version of Angular? Let's compare the two. Instead of all those really annoying articles that are just randomly coming up with reasons of migrating or reasons of why this framework is better than the other, now we can actually have a git diff between two applications and even run stuff in the CI that actually shows what is faster, how the code looks like, and all of that. So that's the Tortilla framework. So you can go to the tortilla.academy uh, and just explore, you know, why is it good, what's going on. And also there are some a number of like existing um, tutorials out there. Um, and, and I think f now, now that's, so that's the framework. So you can, even if you have, you can build your own tutorials on top of that, and that's not a problem. Now more than that, um, all the manuals are also open source. So they're actually rendered here in the repository. So what you see here, this is just an, basically, you don't need to work with Tortilla website to render it. You can actually render it to just Markdown. Like you can see here on the GitHub repository, all the tutorial is here. I can just go begin tutorial and I'm inside GitHub. And let's go to, let's say a step where there's actually Git diff and you see GitHub understands those diffs that Tortilla created and you can actually go step by step and render it here or render it to Medium or the other way around, take it out for Medium because you don't like Medium anymore because everyone now hates Medium. Um, so, so yeah, so this is very powerful. It's open source and if you write your tutorial in it as a writer, you can render it wherever you want uh, also to your own custom website. If you have a Gatsby website or whatever website you want to do, just render, use Tortilla to build your tutorials and then render it to wherever you want. Um, so this is the framework itself, but what I actually wanted to do while I was building the tutorial is actually building one tutorial that using all those tools to being one tutorial that is a bit deeper or more comprehensive than the tutorials we usually um, get out there because usually that you know running a tutorial takes time um, and usually you invest that time at the beginning and after half a year or something or six months or or three months or maybe less or after a week you get sick of this tutorial and you're not updating anymore I always was looking for a tutorial that is much deeper and takes you through the whole um, cycle of app development and that, that, that tutorial keeps getting deeper and deeper instead of deeping, getting shorter and shorter and, or easier and easier. Because a lot of the tutorials today, they introduce new tools uh, and they try to show you how quick it is to build an app instead of explaining what the, to, those tools are actually doing and actually investing in you understanding the concepts in, instead of just writing fast code. Um, and that's why I'm talking here about the WhatsApp clone tutorial. So the WhatsApp Cloud tutorial itself, which uh, is the one that I showed you before, I'll just go here. That's a very comprehensive tutorial um, that it's a full WhatsApp clone on top of uh, the, the front end today use um, React um, with, with the latest React, with hooks and suspense, um, Apollo with Apollo hooks, um, TypeScript, GraphQL subscriptions, GraphQL cogen, GraphQL modules, Postgres so this, as a database, everything is TypeScript, the front end and the back end, um, styled components and material UI. 
that's the current state of the tutorial. And you can see here that this tutorial um, has a lot of steps. So uh, it starts from very simple for just the front end, creating the front end, getting the styles, but then how do you write a basic node server, and then how you transition to GraphQL and why, uh, testing, um, creating routers, then only then after you already work with GraphQL bit, then introducing Apollo client and why would you want to use Apollo client, um, sending mutations, type safety, um, real time with GraphQL subscriptions, users and authentication, um, moving to an actual database with Postgres. How do you actually query REST APIs from your GraphQL API, which is something that's very common and people tend to just skip it. Um, modularity, like you start with one you know, very basic server, but then as you grow and you scale your team, you want to grow beyond that and, uh, and you want to know how to split the schemas, how to split the resolvers and all the different things that comes up with it and performance. How do you measure performance? Both on the, we separated it both on the front end specific and back end specific, but mostly about why would you do that and where you should come about when going into performance. Now, again, this is not a cool tutorial. It takes time uh, and it will just uh, to do and it takes time to go deep into it. It's not to show you the latest and greatest and coolest tools. It's actually showing you the latest and greatest and the cool coolest tools, but it goes deep into why you would use them and how would you do without them? And what do they actually save for you? What do they give you? Um, my goal is for more and more people with the build tools, whether for GraphQL, Node, or React, or whatever, to come to this tutorial and demonstrate, actually in real code, why their tool is better. Uh, and to show really the differences between the tools with the git diff that I showed before here, but instead of versions, between of different stacks. Uh, that's not a problem uh, to do with the uh, tortilla. Um, that's it. Um, now, the whole idea of this tutorial is also it's open source. So the idea is that all of us will slowly improve uh, both the script and the text and also the... Um, uh, the tutorial itself and the tools. So what you can do, where you can talk to us is just open an issue. It's all completely open source. You can open an issue on the tutorial or specifically on the client on the server um, and just should suggest stuff. For example, if I'll go to the uh, client, uh, you can see already that we have, um, um, you can see that we're already talking about React Native uh, which we are trying to think what would be the best solutions there. Can we have, in, we or to introduce a chapter that helps you move to, to support New York Native, or maybe we can actually rewrite the tutorial and using some kind of a UI framework that supports both. Um, maybe, you know, change the backend and have a version with AppSync. Uh, Next.js is definitely something we're looking to add uh, if you want to help us, and many, many other things. Um, so, um, so just join the conversation and start adding things and maybe, you know, we want to think about other stuff as well. Like why not just react? Like we have actually a angular version of, uh, with the same app. Uh, so you can compare angular and react. The angular version needs a bit updating if someone wants to help, help us, but if not, we'll just do it ourselves, uh, soon. Uh, maybe we can create the same backend, but with Swift UI. A version of that with Swift UI, who knows? Um, and many other ideas and also chapters to add and features to add to the WhatsApp itself. Um, and that's it. Um, I think this project is interesting in general for all of us to learn better. Um, but I think it's also interesting for, we work a lot with companies um, that, uh, and the problem with companies, a lot of big companies, is usually they don't invest in onboarding developers. They don't have a comprehensive, uh, even self-development with time uh, courses or things like that. And I think this, in the companies that we work with, this is actually, and for us ourselves, the guild, ourselves, the guild, this is our um, development um, program. So everything we want to do, every new library we introduce, 
is being introduced here. Every task that someone is doing, uh, we're adding it here. Um, and if other companies will do the same and use that as their source of truth or their kind of like own way to go in terms of um, development of their people, I think we can come up with something very, very powerful. But even if we don't, uh, we're going to take care of it. So uh, we really appreciate the help, but without your help, we're still going to do it. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Um, I want to take, uh, so again, this is two parts of it. One is the Tortilla CLI itself that you can use for any tutorial you want. And the other one is the WhatsApp clone, which is a comprehensive tutorial you can use uh, you don't, and learn from or not. Both are fine. Um, last thing I just want to thank, I didn't do all of this by myself, uh, to my team, uh, the guild. Uh, we're a very strange group of people. Uh, and like you see here, if you go to our org on GitHub, our philosophy is that all of our open source libraries, you're probably using some of them, are not under the guild. They're under specific people. We think that's the best way of maintaining and keeping open source libraries maintained for long. Uh, so if you actually want to follow us and see what we do, we added this thing, like this small repository with a list of things, you know, of, libraries that we wrote, like the GraphQL code generator, GraphQL modules, GraphQL inspector, SOFA, um, GraphQL toolkit, merge GraphQL schemas uh, that we took recently from uh, OK Grow. Thank you, OK Grow. Same for GraphQL scholars uh, and many other uh, libraries. And you can actually like click on each individual here and just follow us uh, individually. Because the idea of the guild is to not build a brand of the guild, but to build the specific people underneath here, underneath uh, underneath the guild, and the group of people that actually do the work. Um, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything uh, or ideas, uh, you can open issues, or you can even if you go to my uh, profile and you don't feel comfortable, you know, asking in public, you want to ask in person or anything like that. Um, my email is here and my Twitter is here and the DMs are open. Uh, so I hope um, you'll use it. I hope you give us feedback. This is a start, uh, but I promise you that this is probably already, to the, already today the most, out, the most um, up-to-date tutorial out there for the technologies we use. And it will be, and for us, it will be the easiest to keep it updated because of all the tools that you've just seen and more stuff that I didn't have time to show. Um, so yeah, add cool stuff here, like do a Svelte tutorial, please, and all kinds of other cool shit. Um, thank you. Um, and if you're in a GraphQL uh, conf in Berlin, I'll be there as well, so come say hi. Bye.